Hi, Cindy here. Well, I thought I'd catch you up on what's been going on. I just got told tonight I had my boss at work. My car's been broke down for a week. So in order to get to work, it was overheating and all it needed was a little gasket. Well, I bought the gasket. It's an overflow that goes into your water pump from the radiator. So I bought the parts, but my son busted off the bolts in the water pump housing. So I had my boss put it on a car dolly. He hauled it to the shop at Debec. But he came by tonight and he said, I have bad news for you. I have two bosses because I work two jobs at work. One boss told me the engine was going out. It was using the water and I didn't believe him. The other boss said, I think he might be right. So he came by tonight. He says, I thought I had your car fixed. It wasn't overheating. But he drove it from Parachute to Grand Junction, and by the time he got to Junction, he cracked a block, and now my engine's no good, and I don't have a car to get to work. And so I'm kind of stuck. I'm afraid if I keep driving my daughter's car, and I have to take off early, I have to take off an hour and a half to two hours early so she can get her car so she can go to work on night shift. So we're trying to share her car. Well, you know how it is. How am I supposed to go out? because I'm able to pay my bills now and keep my bills paid, but I don't have the money to go buy a brand new car or even a second hand car. So I don't have a car at all to go to work. So I'm gonna have to continue to use her car till God provides a way for me to get a car and something will probably work out. But it's depressing. I have struggled and worked my whole life to be as old as I am and there's not been one time in my life when I've ever been allowed to go out and pick out a car. When I was 18 growing up, my dad said, this is the car you're gonna get, and I didn't want it. He bought me a family-sized car so I could drive the family around. Then I get married, go through a divorce, and my ex-husband always picked out the cars. So here I am, and the car I had was a car that had my ex-husband's name on the title. So I can't do anything with it. Here's a broken down car that I can't even don't even know where to park it. So my boss left it on the car dolly, said they'd look for an engine. If they can't find one for under $500, I'm gonna have to look around for a car. So next I figure out how to pay for the car, but I have to have a car in order to drive to go to my job on the Redlands. So that's what's up. For me right now, I don't know what to do. I felt like sitting down tonight and just crying, but that's not gonna get it done and that's not gonna do any good. So I think what I'm going to have to do is I have these Thomas Kincaid houses that I've been saving forever. I just don't want to lose money on them because I have 28 of them, but I paid $55 a piece in 2002 and they're collectibles. And you know how it is when you go to sell stuff, sometimes you have to take a loss. But right now, if I sold them, it helped toward buying a car. I need a car that's reliable enough that's going to get me to work. So that's what's up in my life. So if you'd like to, I'd appreciate it if you'd all pray for me because there's power in prayer. And God does work things out. Sometimes us humans like to sweat and worry about things and all panic and get myself sick. Then in the end, God will work something out anyway. I just wished I could learn to quit stressing and worrying about things, but I guess that's human nature. So while you're saying your prayers, if you want to say a prayer for me, I'd appreciate it. This is Cindy. Over and out. Bye.